Weinberg, and this is, this is Book Circle Presents The Cavalry Cycle. This time, we're going to look at some short glimpses of our lad's life in the cavalry. In this setting, a centaur is as strong as a horse and as agile as a man, given the proper training. Dialogue, agility class. I fucklin hate stairs. I didn't used to have to think about stairs. You used to only have two legs. Going up's not so hard. We're going down. It's not the extra legs. I can handle the legs. It's the thousand pounds of horse pushing from behind. Brace with your front legs. I am bracing. Don't use the banister. Why not? What if there's no banister sometime? Look, they gave me a banister. I'm gonna use the Futland banister. It's easier going down backwards. I can't go down backwards now. I didn't mean now, just if the opportunity presents itself. One foot at a time, gentlemen. A back leg, then a front. The day will come when you trip lightly down and spring onto the dance floor for a tango, but right now, one foot at a time. Wish Bryce had never shown around that picture. I want to meet Ed in a dark alley someday. Lay off. Bryce is lucky to have him. Wish I'd had an Ed. Dogs and cats do this all the time. Dogs and cats are a lot smaller. <sighs> Finally. Here's that tight corner again. It's not so tight unless you're a brewery horse. Show us how it's done then, pony boy. Very good, gentlemen. That's the first time everyone got through the kitchen without bumping anything. Excellent, Mr. Wardley. Now, back in, find a place you haven't sat before, and follow the instructions on the sheet. Lieutenant, I don't know how to make an omelet. You will after this. How does this relate to agility, sir? The omelet part doesn't, but it'll teach you how to make an omelet. Later, we graduate to cooking over campfires, which you will find very useful and, of course, roomier. For agility, the point of the exercise is to get everything done by reaching without getting up. Turning around is encouraged. A strong and flexible waist is a tremendous asset. Can we scooch, sir? I beg your pardon? Can we scooch around on our butts without getting up? Oh, if you find it convenient. At this point, your dignity is your own affair. Actually, yes, good idea. Anything to encourage inventiveness in the locomotion department. Please note I'm firing up the central range now. You will all share the use of it. Watch your tails and be on the alert for the smell of burning horsehair. That was an impressive bit of balancing, sir. Oh, thank you. You will come to it in time. I didn't really think about it. I just needed to reach over fells to get to the knob. One hoof. You must be sure of your footing, of course. Gah! Eggs again, please. Why do I keep smashing them? I do know how to make an omelet. You don't know your own strength now. Another reason for this exercise, fine motor coordination. You need to recalibrate. Do you remember toes? What? Well, footing, it reminded me, and I don't think I can remember what it felt like to wiggle my toes. Where's the knife? Knife board, do you want your toes back? No, I just don't like forgetting. Last night, I was trying to remember what it felt like to have just two legs. I don't have any trouble remembering things from when I was a little kid, just a lower camera angle. Cheese, please. Thanks. I don't know there was ever much memory of body. How about a sharp pain in the foot? Well, yes, once I stepped straight on a nail. You're right. It comes back as a pain in my left rear, but it can't have been. Ah, or I can remember it as my left front, either way. Martin's Jodpers, you two won't ever lack for something to talk about. Martin's jodpers, just trying to get in the spirit of things. Sir, do we have to include these herbs? Why, what's the matter with them? They look like mulch. Our lads are complete stallions below the waist, and it all has to get wired up to the brain somehow. Dialogue, our little Lacey. Good evening, gentlemen. Evening, Lieutenant. You look distracted. Sir, can you tell us what that terrific smell is? Smell? Moves nearer. Oh, bother. I expect it's Lacey. Lacey? The mayor? Yes, you might want to move along if you stay here much longer, or if there's a good gust. Hey, Lord, whoa! Holy St. Martin on a crutch. Like that one. Go sit down on that patch of grass. With luck, it'll be dewy. That's little Lacey. Indeed, 
I thought I caught a whiff this afternoon during horse care. She'll need to be out in pasture tomorrow, our Lacey. A girl needs a bit of privacy when it's her time, or we need her to have it. Why sit on the grass? Oh, I see, it's like a cold shower. Exactly. Why aren't you affected, sir? Who says I'm not? But it's just Anno Domini, lads. I've years more to practice, and I'm just plain older. You're particularly susceptible, being fresh changed. How long do we sit here? We're supposed to be back in barracks in a few minutes. Wait until the wind drifts, or failing that, until it gets darker and we can more or less maintain the decencies. Captain Fletcher is very forgiving in matters like this. Waiting happens. Sir, maybe we should, you know, just walk away quietly. We are clearly visible from the road and the houses along it. I don't want to bet that no one is looking or that no one will come along at just the wrong time. We have lived down sillier things, but I'd rather not have to. Are any of you in a fit state to rise? I think we already have, sir. More waiting. This passed ridiculous a while ago. At least you're all taking it well. How so, sir? Well, sometimes around this point, it first hits some fellows that they are not just four-legged men now, but horses, too. Really horses. And a different species' feelings are leading them around by the nose. By some organ or other. They get upset, and it's all very existential. But clearly, you lads are firmly retaining your human self-control. Right? Mumbled a sense. You wouldn't find a stallion simple, uh, uh, sitting around in cold, wet grass. Exactly. Return of waiting. She does smell gorgeous, warningly. Wardley? Sorry, sir. Poor little Lacey. Wardley, at your size, you'd... That's enough, darnly. Stupid. What's stupid, Weldon? Nothing, sir. I would have been, is all. We weren't, though. Someone introduce a new subject of conversation. Ed told me about this some. That's not... Oh, never mind, did he? Very candid of him. What did he tell you? Ed again. Poor bugger, if he's master of horse, how does he ever get away from it? He told, maybe it's a perk. He told me this stuff when he was home for Christmas last year because he knew I'd be enlisting. He says he stays upwind and asks someone from standard cavalry to help if he has to. He says that if the jokes get too raw, he just says, you're just envious. Good on Ed, remember that one. Wise words. I suppose I could fetch a couple of buckets of cold water. No, I'd need six. Sir, this is starting to hurt. Very well. Lacey one, decencies zero. On the word, trot lively for the barracks, though I'm afraid that will be a bit uncomfortable. Can I help, Lieutenant? Captain, I didn't hear you. You were understandably preoccupied. I saw your predicament. Here, pass these round. There are the nose plugs. Came in just this afternoon. Menthol soaked, lads, for people who have to work around uh, difficult odors. Everyone half blind with mint? Good. Off to barracks then. Try to calm down. That may take a while, sir. May I have a couple? I'm starting to wear thin. Certainly. Sorry I didn't get here sooner. Is it Lacey? I'm pretty sure, sir. Are you weeping or laughing? It's just from the nose plugs, really. Get on home. I I'll drop by the groom's office and leave a note about Lacey. Know thyself all over again. And know the other guys, too. Dialogue at the mirror. Hey, Charlie Horse. Good morning, Mr. Payne. Hey, go easy on that beard. Starting to come in good. I'm just smoothing it off. Why'd you change your mind about shaving? I will tell you. Uh-oh. Yes, uh-oh. We seem to make each other uncomfortable. Very good for us, no doubt. It's simple. I want to fit in. All the rest of you have beards. Even Fells has grown one now that his daughter's arrived. Danny's so proud of his, he practically bristles. Yeah, he's always scratching it, and I don't think it itches. He's feeling for progress. Anyway, that's all. I want to fit in. It's something I was really bad at before. That's why I volunteered. I wanted to change a lot of things I was bad at. I was tired of being a loner, and I wanted to have more moxie. Moxie? American slang. I like the word. 
more nerve, spirit, punch, confidence. Balls, if you like. Well, horses aren't loners and stallions have moxie, and I was sick and tired of myself, so here I am. And another thing I decided was that I wanted to be more open, not hide anymore. So I'm telling you this, even though we don't know each other very well, and it's making us both very uncomfortable. It took me a while, but I think I'm getting the knack of it. You know, you philosophical types are easier to take when you keep it all inside. <laughs> That's why they hand us cups of hemlock. Socrates, see, I know some of that stuff. Cool, I never thought you were ignorant, Mr. Paint, but nobody knows all the angles. There's a painful truth. What if being open doesn't work out? I think it will. You should try it. But if it doesn't, I'll close up again. I'm real good at that. Or I was. Maybe I'm not anymore. We're changed, Carlin. Yeah, I'm reminded of that every time I take a step and have three more feet to move. Souls as well as bodies, minds at least, some of us at least. I researched psychology of transformation. I'm sure you did. Where do you get this hemlock? Oh, there's always some kind of hemlock available. Shall I change the subject? Yeah, I didn't sign up for a soul-bearing session. Well, you did open with a personal remark. But okay, I've been thinking about nicknames. You don't like Charlie Horse? I didn't at first, but now I figure it was inevitable nor did you give it in meanness. And I do seem to put people into cramps. No, you're the one who's good at nicknames, and all you got back was Mr. Paint. You need something better. What would you like? You can't nickname yourself against the rules. Is it? Okay, then. Geez, you look like Fletcher now. In what particular? Those x-ray stares he sometimes gives. You think he has fits? I think he's receptant. How about style? What? Style, for your nickname. Not Mr. Style, just style. You hang your duty jacket to minimize wrinkles. You pick up a fresh t-shirt right after doing anything sweaty. You often wear your dress jacket into the village in free time. You have a little wardrobe of rings you rotate through. You came in here to sharpen the point on your beard. If I find mustache wax in here, I know it's yours. You're growing your hair out into a ponytail, which looks good. Above all, you keep that paint coat of yours gleaming. I bet you miss pants and shoes. You saunter when you walk, and you don't come into a room. You enter. You clearly care about your appearance, and you do a good job of it, too. You even try to help us with the nicknames. You know how much Rennie likes being horsepower? A lot. So, style. I think I liked it better when you're bearing your own soul. Oh, that's not bearing your soul. But don't worry, we have months together ahead of us. So what do you think? How do you do, Charlie Horse? I'm style. When is the transformation finished? Realization. Caval Cavalryman Charles Charlie Horse Darnley stood taking down the final notes. Fletcher was lecturing on cosmography, Darnley's favorite topic. Concentrating, he'd been standing stock still at his tall desk for some time, except for his eyes and hand. So the thing to take away is that even though a zone like Yassad or Netzach has all these little zones hanging off it, they're very different in nature. The little ones appear to be off in hyperspace, but the open infinite ones are not. They may be disjoint, but the new theory is they are somehow ingredients of the home zone. We'll go into that next time. Dismissed. Darnley folded the notebook and tucked it in the pack on his flank. He rolled his shoulders and stretched his human back, then seesawed back and forth, stretching front and back legs. And laughed. Fletcher looked up and saw Darnley gazing down at himself. He repeated the laugh more softly, then wheeled and pranced out the door. Pranced like, jaunty, like a jaunty colt, tail up, bouncing as if his legs were pogo sticks. Darnley was not built for prancing, being a dark, heavy-set bay, but he did it anyway. As he passed through the door, he chuckled, almost giggled. Fletcher did not prance, but he exited at a trot, curious. He was in luck. 
Outside, Darnley stood as still as he had in the lecture hall, grinning at nothing. Good news, Mr. Darnley? Fletcher inquired. Darnley had been facing athwart Fletcher. He now reared a little to turn in place, came down facing the captain, and seized his commander's upper arms, his eyes shining. I'm one, he announced. Immediately the manic grin vanished, replaced by confusion, and he dropped his grasp. Sorry, sir. Fletcher ignored the indecorum. One what? One thing, one body, one animal. The grin was back. Ah, that. Fletcher smiled in return. Well, yes, I'm glad you feel... I mean, Darnley interrupted, I just noticed. All I did was stretch my legs, but it was perfectly natural. Sir, all those first weeks, when you were starting us on agility training, teaching us our gates, it was like, all that time I had to be thinking, what's the horse end doing? It was a relief to just stand and hear you lecture and not have to think. You weren't supposed to think about it too often, said Fletcher, interrupting in his turn. As I said, but I didn't say it very often. Yes, sir, on the principle it's no good telling someone not to think of a rhinoceros. And I tried, but, but it's hard, so, you kept all, so I kept you all doing things, running around the track, doing agility courses, learning gates, going swimming, doing horse care, harnessing. Yes, sir, and it did get better. I noticed it getting better, and, and then I thought I shouldn't notice, but well, anyway, just now I stretched and realized I felt perfectly normal. They're just my legs. He spread his arms and looked down at them. Fletcher looked over the lad's shoulder and saw the rest of the class hovering uncertainly in the middle distance, wondering what was doing. The painfully self-conscious Darnley would have to steel himself to a lot of self-revelation, or maybe not. It seemed to be pouring out of him at the moment. Sir, when we were first learning gates, I'd catch myself thinking, well, not so much in words, but it amounted to, how do you steer this thing? And then you'd stumble. And then I'd stumble, yes, sir. I was really scared the first time you had us gallop. He glanced at his mates, probably particularly at Carlin, who had gone galloping on his own, stumbles and all, on his third day. Or maybe Danny, who had tried it on the second day, crashed and rolled, then limped for some hours. Both were still staring back at him. What's up, Charlie Horse? But you galloped, said Fletcher. Yes, sir, but I was afraid, I was afraid it would run away with me. But there is no it. There never was. There's just me. This is me. He began to wind down, sounding calmer. Fletcher nodded. You're one, he echoed. How about the other bits? Your barrel, your tail, the size. They they had their moments, sir. Size wasn't too bad. It was, was very odd the way my body was now a limb on a bigger body, a completely new bigger body. The tail, the tail's fun, sir. He twirled his and grinned. Did it ever hit you like this, sir? In a way, it came on me in stages. One of the joys of teaching is getting to see you experience it. It's wonderful, sir. He reared again and pirouetted, arms and forelegs outflung. It looked clumsy, silly, unselfconscious. Well, thump, he was back on earth. And the wonderful part is it's ordinary. It's been ordinary for days, maybe more than a week. It crept up on me. It does, Fletcher agreed. A lot of ordinary things are wonderful, as I think you know. Charlie Horse nodded. I am indeed very happy for you. Now, yet another agility run through the practice house in eight minutes. In that time, he nodded toward the waiting classmates, you may have some explaining to do. Charlie Horse laughed, threw Fletcher a very sloppy salute, and headed for his mates. He broke into a run, without, Fletcher noted, thinking about it at all. Brief Dialogues Sleep Like a Horse Horses sleep a couple of hours a night, plus some dozing. And our lads? This insomnia sucks. I liked sleeping. I liked sleeping late. You didn't expect to sleep late in the military, did you? On days off, yeah. Now I can't. Read a book. 
scholars on hooves, go stuff a sofa. Healing factor, the downside. To avoid scandal, the cavalry requires the lads to have routine yearly vasectomies, but they heal vigorously. Hello, Black Holt. What can I... Oh. Yes, it's that time, Captain. Damn it, man, I'm 73. Do you... And still in fine shape. You aren't impotent, impotent are you? Well, and if one of the lads heals too quickly and gets in among the mares, we want to be able to say right away, well, it can't be Fletcher. I've been giving that line since before you were born, because it's a good line. But rank hath its privileges, so you get a house call instead of a summons to the clinic. Get up and turn around, please. You call that sufficient topical anesthetic? Because I don't. Don't be a big baby. <laughs> Have you done Carlin yet? He's tomorrow. When you get to this part, tell him Fletcher says hello. That ought to put him off his stride for a while. You're an evil old plug, you know that. <laughs> Ooh. Captain Horsepower. The officers suspect there was some wish granting involved in Rennie Wardley's transformation. Sir, could you come to the gym, please? There's something you should see. A centaur gym must be interesting. No one's hurt themselves, have they? No, sir. Rather, the reverse. Wardley can chin himself all the way off the ground. The gym features a chinning bar, but the normal way for a centaur to use it is to stretch well out to deprive themselves of leverage from the back legs and then pull their forebody off the ground. I definitely want to see that. Can you receive when you do it, sir? I can pay attention. Why? It's just that though Wardley's as strong a lad as ever I've seen, I'm not sure even his arms could lift a draft horse off the ground. Not naturally. You think it's berserker gang? Hysterical strength? But that's natural. I was thinking more, well, superpowers, sir. Ha, <laughs> that would be something. Remember what you said about wishing, sir. I hit him with a sagitta, not a wishbone, but I see where you're going. If it's anything like the movies and such, I can see it now. Secret identities, nemeses, rogues galleries, a secret headquarters, a sidekick. That'll be Bryce. Waves hand across an imaginary screen and intones in a stentorian announcer's voice, which he is naturally quite good at. Captain Horsepower and the Sunshine Colt. I don't know how we'd manage the secret identity, though. He was over eight feet tall, an easy ton, with a glossy black coat, and, oh yes, almost forgot, a cart, cart horse from the waist down. But I wouldn't know him again because he wore a mask. Well, I dare say I'm worrying over nothing. Let's go and see. Pay schedule. The magical economy is happy to use money, but also trades in oath spells and raw psychic energy. Given the small numbers in this cavalry, customized contracts might be possible. Very well, Mr. Uh, Pollux. 80% of your salary to be paid in Newman at the current rate of exchange of euros per night, half to you, half to your brother, who is, I'm told, enlisting today at the other campus in Normandy, and has the same contract. Well, it's nice to see some people were paying attention in classics class. Spooked. Horses acquire phobias easily. Why did you shy at that plastic bag blowing across the road? Nothing, sir. It's dumb. This is your captain speaking. It was not a social question. Oh, sorry, sir. I, I thought it was a badger. A badger? I had a sort of mini flashback. Last month, when we were doing cross-country, I surprised a badger, and he surprised me. I recall. You reared. Yes, sir. He snarled and ran off. No harm done, but... But you have four thin, bare, bony ankles that you are instinctively protective of, and very properly, too. This is a very normal kind of inconvenience, and we know how to deal with it. A little desensitization training. I see, sir. Thank you, sir. Rearing involuntarily was kind of a shock, too. Suddenly you're 12 feet tall. Yes, cracked my head that way once, doing it indoors. If you want to throw a surprise party for a centaur's birthday, do it outdoors. Good manners cost nothing. 
Horses are matriarchal. The band stallion defers to the senior mare. That Fletcher creature is such a suck-up. All little flowery compliments and doors and chairs. It's like something from the 50s. You don't understand, Muriel. For one thing, he is from the 50s. He's 70 if he's a day. For another, he can't help it. Or he can, but it's difficult. And part of the package is that he's anxious to please. I should say, he practically wags his tail like a puppy. Are you saying that's just how centaur stallions are? Yes, when they're being good boys. Otherwise, go review Greek mythology. Not many good boys there. When they're not being anxious to please, they're scheming to uh, elope with you. How delicately you put it. Well, if that's the choice, one takes the puppy dog. I'd call his behavior courtly more than puppy dog. Really, it greases the wheels very nicely. Why do you think you were assigned to the DC li liaison team? We've known about this for generations. Fletcher must know too. Of course he does. And he knows it works both ways. If you have a long record of being pleasantly attentive, you can become quite hard to say no to, especially when you only go around making reasonable, well-argued requests. And, mark me, and you don't get all the pushback and questioning and resentment and ignoring you get from human men. You're kidding. Swear by St. Hugo. Hell, then he can open all the doors he wants for me. Thought you'd see reason. Of course, you have to be in the chain of command, otherwise you have to hope the human side stays up, or we're talking elopement again. But Fletcher has that nicely in hand and sees to it that his boys do too. Not an option. Our lads are not like the soldiers of a mundane nation where there are always more recruits and the brass can pick and choose. They are expensive to create and train, and there are only a few of them. I am the slowest guy in class. Someone would have to be horsepower, unless there was a tie. You were also far and away the strongest, so I wouldn't feel too bad. Charlie Horse, you don't think there's some lower limit, do you? That I'll get washed out if I can't make the grade? No, Rennie, there's no lower limit. If there were, you'd still be far above it. Anyway, they don't wash people out in the DC. Not at all. Hardly at all. Look at the numbers. They built the trainee barracks for maximum expected capacity. That's 10. This year they got, us, they got us six and thought that was perfectly normal. I think they've got five in France. They get so few recruits they won't wash out anyone who's any use at all. Sanders has a collection of yearbooks in his office with pictures of everyone who enlisted in the Grand Norman military each year going back to 1900. I looked through it the other day. There's a DC man enlisted in the 1970s with a peg leg, left rear. He came to them missing a leg, and they still took him and changed him. Spent an expensive sagita on him. Do not worry about your running speed. Poor guy, he probably hoped he'd get his leg back. Yeah, but he ought to have known it was a long shot. He was smiling in the picture. Missing one in four is better than missing one of two, at least. He probably figured that. What if you're an utter dolt or an utter slacker? I haven't dared ask directly, but I think you wind up as a beast of burden and nothing more. One with hands and language, so you're expected to do your own loading and unloading and to understand orders. I saw a couple like that when the Hathor expedition came in. I suppose they were suited to it. Hope so, anyway. So failure's not an option? In a way, the only ways to wash out are into prison or into hospital. Spurs. Standard cavalry ride dedicated cavalry as well as horses. But our lads are not, when you come down to it, horses. Are those spurs? You've got spurs on. You can take those off right now. Sorry, I just routinely leave them on the boots. You shouldn't need them, not even with a horse. They're regulation. Don't give me that. It's regulation that you get issued a pair, nothing about always using them. They're just for really difficult cases. Difficult cases, is that so? Don't even think it. Why, I do believe the girth is loose. You could fall off at any moment. How would you like getting jabbed in the ribs? Jeez, I'm glad the horses don't talk. I heard that. Someone missed his second cup of coffee this morning. There, off, better. You up for this long distance run? If my mount doesn't flag, I've got coffee in my canteen. 
and we'll hear more from the lads in the cavalry next time.